Welcome, my noble lords and gracious ladies, to Eregio, home of the illustrious Gwaithi Murdi, and sanctuary to the true offspring of Finwë. These lands bear the indelible mark of the Noldor, yet we do not yield allegiance to Elrond or Curden. Nay, we are loyal servants to Prince Myrnil, the rightful heir of Gilgalad. Allow me to explain. When our forebears marched forth onto Mordor, alongside Elendil of Númenor, and Durin the Fourth of Hazadum, during the War of the Last Alliance, we vanquished the malevolent Lord Sauron, and set right the grievous folly of Celebrimbor at Ostinithil. Indeed, we paid a grievous toll, for High King Gilgalad of the House of Finarfin perished at the hands of Sauron, and thus our valiant warriors returned home, broken and leaderless. Despite our diminished numbers, the question of Gilgalad's succession led to a great divide within our ranks. To some, Elrond possessed the strongest claim, as the guardian of Gilgalad's legacy. To others, it was Curden the shipwright, master of the Grey Havens. Yet any true Noldor knows better than to entrust the fate of our people to a half-elf or a lop-scouser. No, we are the true children of Valinor and we rally beneath the standard of our Prince Myrnin, son of Celebrimbor, grandson of Curufin, the fifth child of Feanor, oath-bound and rightful High King of the Noldor of Eregion. While the sages of Rivendell derided and even questioned our legitimacy, Prince Myrnil, accompanied by his son Ecthelion and a meagre band of warriors, embarked on a perilous quest to reclaim the forsaken, goblin-infested halls of Austin Ethel to assert their lineage through the crucible of combat. Against all expectations, we prevailed. Our once proud city undergoes restoration as we speak, and even the minds of distant Buzradum have been wrested back under our dominion. It is true that our numbers are few, yet our prowess knows no equal. While Elrond and Curden bask in the glories won by far greater forefathers, we persist in our ceaseless struggle, our gaze firmly affixed upon the vaults of Hazadu. We know of the perils that dwell in its shadowy depths, yet we also grasp the invaluable treasures it safeguards, treasures that could reshape the destiny of our people. Legions of Noldorin elves adorned in resplendent mithril shall make the very foundations of Middle-earth tremble. Those loyal to Imladris shall come to recognize the light, matched only by the splendor of the Silmarils themselves. We shall ensure it by any means necessary. As for those who yet pledge their loyalty to the Dark Lord Morgoth, on the holy mountain here in witness, and our vow remember. Hello my friends and welcome back for another grand campaign in 3rd Age Total War, The Fight and Conquer. This time we're back playing with the AI and Gameplay Overhaul mod, or AGO for short, but now featuring a completely new faction, the Noldor of Region. After the Haradrim campaign, I launched a poll and the result was overwhelmingly clear. A huge thank you to the more than 2,000 of you that voted on the poll. Thank you. I also want to give special thanks to the Divide and Conquer team, Finn from AGO, and a massive shout out to Fingon for making the Noldor submod. You can find all the links you need in the description of this video to download and try these mods for yourself. Lastly, I want to give a special thanks to my fellow YouTuber Ligist for introducing me to this submod. Ligist has done a playthrough on an earlier version of this submod and has also made an in-depth overview of the new faction. You can find a link to that video as well in the description. Before we jump in, I do want to make sure that you are all aware that this is very much a fan fiction submod. We will break the lore on several occasions. If you don't like that, this is probably not the campaign for you. If you're excited, however, for an interesting what if story, which will allow me to go a bit crazier with the intros for each episode, then this campaign will be an absolute treat. As always, we'll be playing on very hard, very hard difficulty with my standard set of house rules. If we capture a Palantir, I'm allowed to toggle Fog of War now and then. 
Hardcore rules apply, so no auto resolving my way to victory, although I might cut out short and pointless battles, and our economy will also be a bit tougher to maintain. Right, that's about all. As always, your support on the first episode of any new campaign counts triple, so any likes, comments, new subs, it all goes massively appreciated, I cannot emphasize that enough. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy the video. Hello my friends and welcome to Eregion, here we are. I am beyond excited to be starting this campaign and even more excited to be sharing it with you all. So thank you, thank you, thank you for joining me. Um, I am mostly excited because this is just going to be a brand new experience for me. It's a new faction, one I haven't played as, one I've never even played against, which opens up a lot of opportunities just on being surprised. I specifically um, didn't watch all of Ligist's videos because I wanted to keep a lot of the surprises for me. I didn't really take a look to any of the scripts either. Um, I had to change some things in the game files just to make the music, the copyright free music, which I hope I got right, work. If this video is copyright claimed, then so be it. I don't really care for that. Um, but besides that, I'm jumping in pretty much blind. I assume a lot of you are also jumping in blind. For those of you that watched Ligist campaign, this is the updated version, so some things will have changed, though not everything, of course. And yeah, let's just jump in. But before we do, of course, as always, there is some administration we need to take care of. First question, hardcore mode. Yes, as already mentioned, we're going to play with hardcore mode. It doesn't really change all that much. Um, just add some cost for sieging settlements, which is like a, a resupply cost, and also disables auto resolving, which I typically avoid doing anyway. The welcome screen, which is specific to AGO version 2.1 still waiting for the update. Um, if you're new to AGO, then I suggest you read through it. I am not new to AGO. My previous Haradrim campaign was of course in version 5 without AGO, but uh, as a whole I've already played it a couple times. And then there's of course the introduction screen for the Noldor of Region. I somewhat based my uh, cinematic intro on this, but not entirely. So if you want to read through a bit of a different approach, to the Noldor of, a, Noldor of a Region as a fantasy faction, then go ahead, read through it. I won't go through all that because that would take the entire video, but I'll scroll through it ever so slowly so you can pause where necessary if you want to read it. What I will, however, emphasize is that the mod creator himself advises us to conquer Western Moria as soon as possible to get rid of the Goblins of Moria, the Misty Mountain Orcs. That is advice that I will take to heart. He also warns me for the Dunlendings, but unless I'm mistaken, we don't start out at war with Dunland. No, we don't. We start out at war with Mordor, Dogoldur, the Goblins of Moria, the Orcs of Gundabad, which are quite far away, as well as the Witch Realm of Angmar, which is also quite far away. Same with Dogoldur and Mordor, really. The only ones we absolutely need to worry about are the Goblins of Moria, because they're right on our doorstep. We are allied to the High Elves, Got trade rights and military access to the full shebang, but we'll of course see how long that will last. Because one of my victory conditions is indeed to hold Imladris and even Mythlot. So, you know, it seems like they will have to go to war with the Hyals at one point, or maybe we could convince them to confederate with us, join us. We'll have to see. I need to hold 24 regions, which isn't all that much, but I do need to eliminate Dunland and Mordor and the Goms of Moria. Somewhat surprised that Dunland is in there because we don't start out at war with them, so I could go for a diplomacy path, but eventually we'll have to kill them. So maybe I'll try to befriend them in the beginning just so we don't get stuck in a two-pronged war, but we'll see how that goes. All right, um, we start with two settlements, so Austin Ethel over here in the region, and then all the way, which I believe used to be called Buzradum, now is called Ost and Noldor, different name there. We have a general Kiryatan and a small band of warriors as well. Pretty wealthy settlement, actually. 1.6k. I think they start out with mines. Yeah, mining network, which is the highest tier of mines. So that's quite nice. Um, that also brings me nicely to a point. For this campaign, I would really like to rename every single settlement to a somewhat, somewhat, law-friendly elven name. Can be Sindarin, can be Quenya. 
doesn't really matter and I would very much appreciate your help with that. So if you have a great name for the settlement, do let me know. You can already plop your suggestions in the comments and then I'll apply them to future settlements we captured or you can add them when we capture the settlement and you're like, oh, I got a great name for, you know, Tharbad. Go ahead, post it in the comments and then once we get it, we'll rename it. If, of course, I like it. If it's a shitty name, then I won't use it. <laughs> All right, uh, let's take a look at our family tree. We have High Prince Myrnil, he has a son, Ecthelion. He has two sons, actually, Kiriatan. Is that an adopted son? No, I think that's a full son based on the family tree. So, Ecthelion is out on the field with a bunch of Lindar and Manyar and more Lindar Bowman, which are, I think, just reskinned High Elf units. Yeah, they're not reskinned here, so pretty easy to tell. Ecthelion himself. Ooh, I can train Sons of the Fallen here, mercenary unit. Has a Region Heavy Knight, which are, I think, our best cav unit. 14 attack, 13 charge, an absolute monster. 32 defense, they inspire our troops, they frighten enemy infantry, and they get a bonus against other cav. So, just a really good unit. They also get a speed bonus as well. Nice. Okay, that is a pretty damn good unit to start out with. Austin Ethel, we have High Prince Myrnil. Let's see what he has. Stormguard, 17 melee attack, 11 missile attack, 34 defense, an archer unit, which is also quite good in melee, actually really good in melee. Inspire, skilled against mounts as well, and they frighten enemy infantry as well, so lots of frightening units. I think they're quite similar to Gilgalad's company of the High Elves. Uh, nothing otherwise to report there. Osten Nolor, our other son, Kiriatan. He has, let's see, Austin Ethel Rangers. Okay, so that's a horse arch unit. 13 melee attack, 9 missile, 8 charge, not bad, 22 defense. Uh, also skilled against mount, so a very, very good anti-cav ranged unit. Will definitely come in handy. Although I don't really, I can't really imagine we'll be facing a lot of cavalry on this side of the war. And look at that. Campaign strategy model, that looks fantastic actually. Really nice looking. I'm going to plop you back because you bring in a lot of money. Okay, I'm not exactly sure what my standard bodyguard is, is it? It's not these guys because otherwise they'd get free upkeep, I think. Could it be a Region Heavy Knights? Could that be my standard bodyguard? In that case, that is quite crazy. Okay. Alright, so let's see what else we got. We have a spy, Hirgon. Who is chilling in Dunland, but I think I will move him towards Moria pretty much straight away. Just to keep an eye, they've got some orcs in a fort. Althruk, no, Athruk. Okay. A bunch of shitty goblins, nothing scary. Okay, okay, okay. And then I got a diplomat who I actually want to send straight to talk to Dunland. Try and get trade rights? Can we, like, get off on a good start? I must no! <laughs> Dunland is like, stick your trade rights where the sun don't shine. That's not very nice, but okay. Yes. Then I guess I'll send you... Do I have any diplomacy with the Northern Dunedin, the Rangers? No. Then I'll send you towards Fenas Drunin. As you wish. So we can befriend yes. the Rangers, maybe turn them against the High Elves, we'll see. Uh, okay, I start out with some healthy amount of money. I'm not losing money, I'm making a little bit of cash at the moment, not a whole lot. These guys have free upkeep. Let's see... Calabrimbo's palace, okay. Calabrimbo's throne, very nice. City, ruins of the Gwaithi Murdin, which already gives us a building cost reduction of 20%. That's quite massive, actually. These mines are only 3.6k because of it. Culture building, farm, region chasm, which gives me my Amanyar units. And then the Noldor Gardhal, which gives me my Lindar units. Okay. I think I will need to upgrade my blacksmith before I can get the higher tiers of oh look spoiler alert i don't want to take a look at that it's not no older barracks i need it what do i need for that a large town which i have hall of culture and a blacksmith would maybe like to get that as soon as possible to get these older units out on the field they definitely make a big difference they're quite expensive but Perhaps I need to focus on my economy first. So that's kind of the thing with the Noldor, which is very similar to the High Elves. Quantity is really bad. My unit size is small. My availability of units is low. And my units are also very, very, very expensive. So I won't be able to get too many of them. 
but the quality is through the roof, you know, one high elf unit is worth 10 goblin units or something silly like that. So I think investing in money early on with a little bit of troop training is actually the way to go. But look at that, 1k just for a standard cav unit, it's not even a very good cav unit, it's an okay cav unit. Oh man, these are really expensive, yeah, I need some money first. So I think I'll go for a Builder's Hall, which should stack nicely with Calabrimbo's... No, the Gwethi Murdane. I think, does that stack? You know what? I'm not going to run the risk. I'm going to go for mines straight away. Five turns, immediately make me some money. And then in Ostenoldor, I think I will go for the Builder's Hall first, so I can start building roads and a grain exchange. Now, something I want to maybe rush towards is under towers because there is a palantir there and that would give me a lot of information uh, per the palantir rule of course which i think is also implemented hard coded in ago but i might be wrong on that so i don't want to move kiriatan out because he brings in the cash in ostern Oldor, though he would be very helpful to have along but i think with one unit of amanyar and two units of lindar I'll have to scout. It doesn't cost me any money because these guys don't get free upkeep, so I might as well. But if it's just a bunch of rebels and it's nothing too scary... I think I might be able to do it. Yeah, this is rebel territory. I don't think it gets taken in the turn 1 auto expansion, but I might be wrong. As for Austin Ethel, I do notice that High Prince Mayernil does not get free upkeep. And I don't think he brings in that much money. 77. For 77 gold per turn, I'd rather have him on the field alongside his son. So I think for this first turn, I will just... Thabat seems kind of tasty in a way. It has no garrison. Interesting. Hmm. I could keep an eye on that. But I think I'll move Meirnil with Ekthelion and maybe lay siege to this fort. A fort lasts three turns, so I, I can just, you know... If they move out, I destroy them. If they don't move out, I starve them. If they bring in reinforcements, I can always still pull back. So I think that's a pretty good spot to chill at. And I think that's everything for my first turn. Unless... Is there anything else I need to pay attention to? I don't think so. First episodes are always a bit stressful extra stressful for me because a there's a lot that can go wrong you really need a good start with any campaign but especially a campaign that really emphasizes quality over quantity if you miss your start as high elves lothlorian even isengard then you kind of slow down for the rest of the campaign okay no surprise goblin attack just yet good uh, and also the first campaign from a youtube perspective is the most important one it's the one that gets the most views always so you know it's it's a launch pad for a successful entire campaign all right this turn of the independent realms might take a little bit longer actually it's not that bad because it should run the auto expansion but i don't think it matters too much for us that is now a garrison in thab and it's quite a respectable garrison so we'll leave it at that uh, Alright, we get the extra retinue expansions, the Sword of Celebrimbor, give this to the man you want to be the next heir. Of course, it's Echthelion. Um, Helmet of Prince Echthelion, Commander of Region, yeah, just a bunch of bonuses. Okay, these guys, are they in range of Austin Ethel? No, yes. Oh, he's got some crossbows. If he wants to try and lay siege to Austin Ethel, he can. I wouldn't like it, but I'm not opposed to it. Alright, how is Under Towers looking? Let's follow the road. That should lead us straight to the settlement. That's a small garrison. Five units. I got three units. Isn't Peter Jackson around here somewhere? Oh, I think. Yeah, there he is. Satellite mercenaries. If he joins in, that might be a problem. But I can attack it straight away. Only got five units. I can't get any mercenaries because only generals can get them, not captains. Uh, if I get close enough, maybe I'll get information. I think I'm going to have to lay siege to it and then see what they have. That's about a slightly against me, but not that much. Okay, 
They've got about twice the amount of troops that I have, but one elf is definitely worth two of this crap. Ruffians, Woodland Hunters, not a problem, although Woodland Hunters are not that bad. Five missile attack is respectable. We boast, I can't check, I think seven? Cell swords. Hmm. Those could be a problem in melee. I think it's worth a shot. Getting a Palantir early on will give me a lot of information. Um, which will just make everything much easier. And I will be able to plan accordingly. Information on the campaign map is just so damn useful. So I think it's worth taking the risk. Alright, well, let's see what these elves can do, eh? Alright, judging by the music I hear, I did not install the copyright free music pack correctly, so yeah. no money for me. Alright, let's see here. Hmm. Sometimes villages have like a nice hill you can climb on, but these ones are too steep and too small. Same with this one. It's a nice little tower up there. Uh, I'm thinking this approach is probably the best. So how much missile attack have I got? Five only. Oh, so we have the same missile attack. But we do have better accuracy. And you might say, oh, Izzy, you're completely wrong because your accuracy is low. But there actually are three types, I think three, types of accuracy. That is orc accuracy, that is human sort of accuracy, and that is elven accuracy. So an elf with low accuracy is still better than a human with medium accuracy, for example. And an elf with low accuracy is a million times better than an orc with low accuracy. So don't be too alarmed by that. These Lindar are actually pretty good for a first tier unit. So I'm thinking moving my Lindar here and then firing like that. I think that will work. But I do need to be wary of counter fire. So I put him in wide mode. Let's see, maybe move back a little bit. We should have more range than them, so let's exploit that. Get in position. Fun fact, Lindar Bowman are one of the few units that have both male and female in the same unit. Look at that, I do like them with the reskin, you know, the red cloaks. It matches the elves quite nicely. Big fan of that. We are not in range, so let's move a bit closer. Oh, we are definitely not in range. Uh, somewhere up there. Okay, move in. I don't think they can take this path, right? No, that's blocked for them. So if they want to move forth, they'll have to go that way or this way. We are now in range. Fire away, elves. There we go. I prefer if you fight on the woodland hunters. Maybe the cell sword as well. I don't know. Just a hit. But see, for low accuracy, they're pretty damn accurate. They don't really miss that many shots in a P1 guard mode. If you're wondering why I put them on guard mode, it's so they don't chase units. I give the order to fire on the ruffians, for example. If the ruffians pull back and they're no longer in range, then these guys will just pick a new target instead of rushing after them. Alright. See, I don't know. Do I want to fire in this blob? Alright. Amanyar. I don't know if Amanyar can beat cell swords. 17, 17, Jesus. 17, 17. They frighten infantry, quite important. Roughly 5, 8. 14, 13. Not bad, not bad at all. I actually have an idea. If I put you here, we should have a nice kill zone like that. You can stay there for now. You can fire on this cluster. Just like that, we've already shot 14%. That's a wild number. Alright, don't rush them. If they want to move back like the absolute morons that they are, we will let them. Alright, get in position. Lords and ladies of the Lindar. Okay, they're rushing in their woodland hunters. They're not even firing. Your range is not that bad. So if you want to run in them first in melee, be my guess. They might be going round. Which is fine. That'll take so long. We'll have already killed the most of them. Especially if we can fire like that. This is perfect. We have a wide opening that they can't use. Oh, yes. And shooting the cell swords in the back. I mean, it doesn't really matter because they don't have shields, but... Alright. 
Keep it up, keep it up, keep it up, up, up. These woodland hunters don't stand a chance in melee. Look at this guy, look at this guy. Chop. Did you see that spin move? Holy. Damn, these guys look awesome. Yeah, I see they can't. They're trying to cross, but they're like, oh no, the invisible wall of doom. Alright, this also is not really doing anything. How about you guys fire on them, because you've got a better angle, and you guys fire on the cell sword. Unless I move you a bit closer, then you can probably fire on the town square. Let's honk the horn for good luck. I might just be able to grab my first settlement with relative ease. Okay, fire in their back. Oh yeah, that's an absolute slaughter. There might be an inkling of friendly fire here, but it wouldn't be an easy campaign without friendly fire, you know? Alright, move in. Go into tight formation, because they're not fighting at you. The enemy are badly bloodied. They have lost it's half stopping us from going here. Oh, cell swords. The only real melee threat. I would like to win this battle with as few casualties as possible. Don't draw attention, yes. So if we could just shoot the cell swords without engaging them in melee, that would actually be quite good. Alright. They're now firing at me, so I will send in the boys. Keep shooting the cell swords. If they want to chill in the town square, I will try to attack them from multiple sides. These Lindar aren't exactly built for melee, but they'll do. For a flanking unit, they will more than suffice. Ah, but here come the cell swords. They would be a threat if they actually had more units left. Can we beat ruffians? 712? Oh yeah. Can definitely go toe to toe with some ruffians. Problem is on the town square, of course they won't rout. They will keep fighting till the death, but that's already down to ten. Yeah, this is perfect. Okay, there goes Captain. What's his name? Lachaith. Flank them, finish them off, and just like that, we will have claimed the Palantir. Nice. Didn't expect it to go that smooth, but hey, power of the elves. But yeah, I need to be careful in every battle. Really want to make sure that we keep our casualties as low as possible. So this, I'm pleased, but there's still a lot. I need to be wary of that. Keep being wary of that. But I mean, if you look at it like that, not a whole lot you can say about it, right? But you can definitely tell the bowmen. Big difference there. And I think that's just sheer positioning. So if we're just a bit smarter with it, we can definitely achieve some better results than this. Right. Well, on the towers, I should have checked, but I assume they'll have a healthy elven culture? Oh, they look... potential for riots. See, I wish I could close this screen and look what the actual... There's barely anyone there. Do I want to massacre all 59 inhabitants? At that rate, we'll never upgrade it. So I think I'll take the risk with occupying. Oh, it's stuck at 51. I'll put it on low. What's the culture like? Oh, it's actually really... There's only 5% oven culture. Yikes. Um, guess we'll get the artist studio right away to try and boost that culture. And just like that, we have the Elosterion stone. Perfect. That will be a very helpful tool. We also have some smiles. Nice. I can actually oppress some hobbits. Very nice. That pleases me greatly. Um, I think I'll keep laying siege to them. I mean, if these guys want to attack me, Humgrat, it's a really, I mean, it's a big army, but for the exception of a couple units, it's mostly a very poopy army. So if they want to face me on the field, I welcome them with open arms. I could just bum rush Khazadum, but I also don't want to anger, well, first the Doomstack and the Balrog. Those are yes, dead. I'd like to avoid that. As you will. Alright, yes. can I Without talk question. to the rangers? They should have yes. a settlement somewhere in here. The lone lands. As you wish. 
There we go, tier three. In. You want to trade? How could we refuse nice. such a honor I'll come back for an alliance later on. Question. That should boost our income a bit. Yeah, look at that. Uh, actually making a decent bit of money, and I haven't built the mines yet, so that's nice. Yes. We'll also try and get friends with Bree. And I think I'll invest in an extra archer unit, just because archers are so important, especially against goblins. Really want to try and befriend Donlan, though, for now. Because that might bite me in the butt if I don't. I, I have one settlement and barely any troops, so I really need to be careful here. But if I'm able to get rid of the goblins, that will be instrumental to my success. The, the sooner I can beat them and the sooner I can get those pretty wealthy settlements under my control, that will help massively. Okay. See, I don't know if I can beat both at the same time. So I think what I'll do is withdraw. And that sh I should be able to lure one or two. I'll do a short withdraw. If I must, I will reload and do a far withdraw. Now you might be saying, oh, is he, you know, safe's coming already. But I merely say that just because when sometimes you press withdraw, they withdraw in the most awkward of positioning or they just move to a different side of the same settlement. I can't always account for what the AI will do. See, that's what I mean. What the hell kind of withdraw? They're withdrawing in the wrong direction. Or would I just try and fight, you know? <laughs> I don't know. This is a really poopy army. This is something else. This is a big army. But if I wipe them, then, you know, they're gone. That's 3,000 troops. That's 4,000 troops, actually. And I have 627. No, we're going to do a far withdrawal, so I'll be back in just a second. Well, guys, I'm actually going to be honest with you. I loaded in the battle to do a far withdrawal, but then I noticed that there's a massive hill here, which I could potentially use quite nicely to my advantage, and it's relatively far away to the border that if things get too heavy, I might still be able to pull back if needed. I'm, th I'm thinking we, we take the risk, you know, just eradicate two massive goblin armies with a general and just, you know, absolute legends. I mean, in theory. <laughs> we'll see how it goes in practice. But if I can set up nicely on this ledge and just have my cavalry hammering away at their troops when they come in with my storm guard, look how fantastic these guys look. Also a special ability, right? Sorry, Wraith, Wrath, I suppose that's supposed to be, of the Feanorians. And ecthelion has got Light of Elbereth, which is a pretty standard ability. I think I can do a lot. And what also will help out massively is if I can get rid of their captain early on and just completely demolish them at all. So I'm going to run the risk. The and I might regret this, especially because these guys are coming in from behind me. That's very annoying. Oh, they're really coming in from behind. Might need to reposition then. Could reposition up on this hill. Alright, we'll do that. Um, and I'll just have Ecthelion completely annihilate the other army. That might be very optimistic, we'll see. Uh, actually, I want to move you here. Is that good? No. You go here. Yeah. Alright, everybody knows what they need to do. Advance. Look at these guys, though. I mean, based on their stats and the fact that they're skilled against mounts, they should be an absolute beast at taking down the enemy captain. And once that happens, battle's over. These guys will rout. But who was the captain? Not you. You. Do I just go in straight away? The other army I'm not too concerned about, with the exception of their bodyguard, which I believe in AGO is also a warg unit. In fact, that's also in regular DAC. Problem is, to hit that captain, I need to go hit him from this side, because he's near the banner carrier. So if I hit him from this side, I won't kill him. But just one fell swoop and he could be down, and then... 
this battle might actually become quite a bit easier. Wargs are... they scared horses, but I don't think they're extra skilled against horses as far as I know. I will ram by the Vobadath just to make sure I get rid of that captain. He should only have one hit point, so one good charge should be it. Maybe two. I think we're hitting him dead on. He's in there. He's dead. Perfect. Pull out. I don't think we lost a single unit. Pull back. We might lose one on the retreat. Oh, we lost two in total. To kill a captain, worth it. Four in total. Slightly less worth it. Okay, they're chasing me, which is good. Because then I'll pull back towards these guys, my friends. I have friends in high places. Oh, no, okay. I want to kind of separate the walks from the rest of the pack. Or I might just prioritize going after this general now. Oh man, this is actually a very rough fight. But having one general dead, or captain dead, is going to make this a lot easier already. I want my storm guard in the front because they are skilled against mounts. So let's just double check. Yeah, that's going to be the general. Yep. And there he is. Any good? I can't check his too far. So kill him and we'll have both generals dead. That's just a bunch of snaga. I think all of them are snaga, yes. So they will rout straight away. Ain't no doubt about it. I don't want them to link up with the other army though. This army is surprisingly passive for an army that was aggressive against me. But the combination of Ecthelion and... Uh, what's his name again? Maidon? Should be... More than enough to get rid of their general and thus their army. I do want them to move separately though, and now they're kind of moving in together. What's your range? 220, okay. That is quite, quite, quite far. I do think the goblin bodyguard is skilled against Mount. I could check that later on. Why are they not moving? I'm surprised they're not... Oh, they are moving. They're just taking their sweet, sweet time. Look at us. Getting itchy trigger finger. Just need to be wary of that, General. What does this ability do, anyway? Uh, one use. Locks own army morale. Plus 300% own army combat effectiveness. That's massive. Minus 890 own army fatigue. Temporary, so completely removes any tiredness and lowers enemy morale. Ooh, that's also quite a big one. Minus five. I'm not sure how... Is that a lot? I assume it's a lot. See, that could be massive. But I'd rather save that for the second army because these guys, once the general is dead, they're gone. They're just filthy snaga. The other army, on the other hand, they got some better units. Nothing crazy, but better nonetheless. Hold on to your ammo. So you can hit the Goblin Bodyguard and then fire away. Which is almost... I'll already be fired on the Goblin Band. If you miss, which is unlikely, then you might hit the Bodyguard. But now you can change to shoot the Bodyguard. Alright, they're coming in now. But they're too far away. Unless they start running, which they're not. Then we'll be able to face them before the rest of the army. Good. Tactics. Strategy. Thinking. Things I'm not used to doing. I really need to do now. I'm taking a beating. Alright, so let's see. Who are we dealing with? Where is the goblin bodyguard? 12, 26. They scared horses, but there's nothing about them being skilled against them, so... My calf should be able to beat them. But they do have good stats, so, you know. Let's already run in against the Snaga. Just so they don't start chucking javelins. Keep firing on the... Wargs. They're spread out, which is a bit annoying. Who knows, we might be able to rout them even without killing the general. Seems unlikely, but... Well, maybe. Already going to have you run in. Goblin bodyguard is moving. Watch 
Try to kill the general if we can. Good, good. Common bodyguard is still quite sturdy, I must admit. I think he's going to try to charge my Lindar. Okay, that was a quite bad charge. Alright, switch your targets. Pull off. Light of Elbereth! Okay, pull out. Uh, Lindar. Okay, the rest of the army is too far away. Yeah, we lost some there. Those goblin bodyguards. Don't want to mess with them. Their general might be in trouble, though. I don't see where he's at specifically. Okay, keep firing. Get ready for the flank. This is looking good. This is looking good. 8% for 8%. <laughs> it's never about the percentage, though. It's all about the morale. And that morale, I think, is about to plummet. All I need is a good charge on their general, really. Get him out of the game and then... That's that. Alright, switch your target. Keep an eye on the reinforcements. They're not here yet. No, they're too far away. I'm really counting, especially for those reinforcements. Oh, they already broke. To uh, reduce them at all. The general seems to be buggering off. Which is good. Leaving his men behind. Careful, run away. Those guys will destroy you on the charge. Don't let them get a good charge in. Oh, damn. Yeah, these guys are really... They're not quite Azog Defiler tier, but they are... They are tough guys. But my general is skilled against Mount, so I will run him in in melee. It really is key to get rid of that general, and then this... This entire mess is just over. Alright, switch to your spears or whatever. Oh, you got like... Darth Maul! Holy crap! Get him! Catch that general. Eradicate him. Yeah, got big routes going, boys. Even with that general still breathing for now. Let's stop those archers from destroying my lines. And just like that, the odds are turning in my favor. I will have lost a decent amount of troops, but I will have killed a decent amount of troops. Don't let that general get away. That's my main concern. He's down to four. Okay, get rid of him. Is that him? I think that's... It's hard to tell who is who exactly. I don't know. It might be him, it might not be him. Well, he's dead. And that's the end of that army. I have lost a decent chunk of Ecthelion's unit, so we need to be a little bit more careful now. But I'm still holding on to the Wrath of Feanor. So we should be able to use that to our advantage. Uh, stop firing on them. Alright, troops. Let's reassemble. That general is already dead of the other army, so that's going to save me a lot of effort. Also ranking up some experience here. But this is the bigger force that we need to deal with. Light of Oberth, does that cause... No, it improves our morale, but it doesn't reduce the enemy morale. Okay. Still, that's fine. Ought to make sure we kill enough of the army for it to be destroyed. I think we have... Okay, they're deploying over there. I think they're having some second thoughts. I also like that my troops are just getting winded. Not tired. No. Even these guys are mostly fresh or warmed up. Not getting tired. Okay, I think we've kind of forsaken the height advantage, but that's okay. Stormguard, I'd prefer to use you against enemy warps. Actually, they're not committing yet. So I can claim the high ground advantage. Say no more. If you're just going to stand there, I will take the high ground. And I will run in my infantry right away, because then I can get a nice choke point going. 
I'd prefer to use up Mehron's ammo. That just makes things easier. Okay, nice. They're already shaken. I haven't even done anything yet, and they're already like, oh, I don't know how to feel about this. Careful. They're trying to flank us. I want to not commit my cav just yet. And I want to fire on the warg riders. They are falling so fast. Oh, that is beautiful. Oh man, those numbers dropped massively. They were in the 60s before. Their morale is trash. It's absolute trash. If I press this now, I don't know what the range is though. I'm going to commit them in a bit deeper and then press it. And I think that's that. Done deal. Go home, you know. Mind the gap. Boom! Is that a big route? Is that the big route I was hoping for? No, but it is a big route. It's a massive route, but it's not the full route. Not yet. I do need to run them down, though. Look at that. What a nice chain reaction. If I can get rid of those heavy goblin infantry, that would be... Oh, we got rid of one. When Ecthelion joins, I think we got a full route of this section. They got some troops left over here. Are you guys I'm piercing by any chance? No, but you do fight an infantry. Oh man, morale is a game changer here, boys. I hope someone used to do that. It has been a while, but people used to keep track of my kill death ratios in any campaign. If someone wants to, f go ahead and do it for this campaign, because I think it's going to be massive. This battle alone would top the charts. I got those storm guard in there. Absolutely amazing looking unit. They can just bash you with their helmet and you'd be dead. Just completely bash your brains in. Oh, some troops are coming back. Not for long, though. Uh, make sure this entire army is gone, please. There's so many of them still out there. Okay. They're gone. Nice. As foretold. Oh, I'm losing a lot of Lindar. Oh, because of those Wolk Riders. Damn. That's unfortunate. That's a big stack of my Lindar gone all of a sudden. The thing is, I need my calf to run these bricks down. So actually, yeah, okay. Alright, let's try to get rid of as many as we can, but there's still huge chunks of troops running amok. It's actually going to be hard for my calf to catch them all, but we're going to try. So many of them running. The Great Goblin Rout of Eregion. Get out of my land, prick. 85%. That's the magic number. 90% is an even more magic number. Yes. Glorious. Actually caught a lot of them. We got 2,200 prisoners. Okay, well that settles that. We know how to deal with the goblins now. Get rid of their leadership and no matter how many of them there are or how powerful their troops are, because they had some decent units, it actually becomes a cakewalk. I will try to avoid general stacking, but, you know, with how few troops I have, it does make sense to general stack at the start of the campaign. It would be stupid not to do so. <laughs> wow. That's an amazing number. Very good. Look at that. Who killed the most, actually? The Eregon Heavy Knights. Yeah, more than the Storm Guard. Got a lot of XP as well. He's already max XP. Look at that. That's fantastic. Nice. Right. Let the foul denizens of Moria know not to mess with the heirs of Payano. If they want to pay it, I will, I'll allow them to. I figured. They probably don't have that amount of money. Oh, look at that. We eradicated one goblin stack and another one pops up. Hmm. Well, that's annoying. We did make a nice bit of money from that. I'm gonna stick Maku. What have you got, Maku? Walk, just regular walk riders. See, I could clean out this army pretty much the same way I did with the other one. 
Get rid of Marco and the rest will follow. I'd say that's worth considering. I know the goblins can just keep spamming troops. Not much will change unless I start taking settlements. I could lay siege to an on rod. Lunug the Bloody only has like, what, mountain orc hunters I think? Yeah. Plus a garrison. Ain't much to write home about. I'd feel more secure with Marco gone, but... Problem is, he's easily replaced. If he wants to try and attack Austin Ethel, I don't think I'll get a garrison. So I don't think I can hold with that few troops. So that's kind of the problem. I need to both defend my one settlement, but I also need to start taking settlements. But I don't have the troops to like maintain garrisons. So that's always going to be a bit of a, a balancing act. Which yes. will be quite difficult. The yes. weather top. That's not in Bree hands, is it? No. Yes, my lord. But we're close to Bree. Uh, no big riots yet in Under Towers. Good. People like me. Good. I, I like to be liked. That's all I ever wanted. Uh, oh, wait. Did I... I misclicked and I scrapped the artist. God damn it. Well, there goes one turn of progress. Austin Noldor has the builder's hole finished. So I think I'll get roads there. I think that's going to help me a lot in the long run. Don't think anything else really helps me. And a ballista would be nice, but not here. It would be very helpful in Austin Ethel, but... Right. I think we attack Marku. It's just such another easy army to kill. Get rid of Marku and then the rest will just fall. And I think I can honestly kill them with just my two generals, so I... Don't think I need to expand anyone else. It's another risky battle, so I will make a third save file, just because. But high risk, high reward, you know. Alright, let's jump in. Put an end to this evil. Bloody dark, I can barely see anything. Can we just wait until there's some... Oh, it's darker. Light? Don't tell me it gets even darker. Does morning never come? God damn, this is dark. I'm just going to move here, just because I can see something. There is... Ridiculously dark. Alright, so the plan? Run down there, General, and then, you know, I don't know. We'll see. Is he going to pull back? No, he's actually going to attack me because he's, like, confident that he'll kill me. He's only got one unit of war riders, right? So I'm just going to go ahead and kill him. I want to avoid using my troops, or, you know, just use him as a anvil, but not as a hammer. Alright, let's be smart about this, but I want to hit the general, but it's bloody hard to see, but he's over there. Ah, oh, he's got troops surrounding him, which is a little unfortunate. But... This crossbows, the crossbow, I can't speak, man. They're not in range, are they? No. Oh, they're chucking javelins, you absolute... They're shooting me. If any of you guys die because of a little goblin arrow, you're not worthy of being in a Region Heavy Knight. Right. Ah, his general is committing. Good. That means his general is dying. Oh, someone was unworthy. We should be able to destroy these wargs like it's nothing. We didn't destroy a single one on that charge. Are you kidding? Oh, no, we killed a few, but not nearly enough. I feel like wargs have a hidden bonus against Cav, because it doesn't show on the tooltip, but they definitely outperform my Cav, where they really shouldn't. I will still kill them, don't worry about it. Might as well just get rid of some Goblin infantry in between. Demolish them, nice. Some of my Lindar are getting shot, that's okay. Alright. Kill the general, pop our abilities. Done deal. But where is like the war units all over that place? Is that the general? No. Hello. I'm looking for a general. That better not be my general. Okay, it's not. 
So he's moving back now. Oh, come on. Don't be a little... Hmm. That is unfortunate. I'm going to pull back my troops. Don't want to waste them. Where is your general? Bring forth the coward, Maku. Do not let him hide behind whatever goblin trash he scraped from the mountain. I'm not too concerned about my storm guard. They'll be fine. They just need to live for as long as I need to kill the general. Kill him. Pop Feanor's wrath. Are my Amanyar blocking my channel? Oh, Turns out I am a moron. So what if I'm the moron? Come on. Kill him. Yep. Nope. The Amanyar are blocking me on every single opportunity. Pop the ability. Oh, not an instant route, okay. I guess I put too much fate into it. Ah, never mind. It takes a moment to s seep in, but uh, we're getting there. Charge, bye. Huh, I'm rather surprisingly good. Don't worry. I'm not getting scared. It's just a matter of perception. For they perceive they still have a chance to win. Whereas they really don't. And once that gets through their thick skulls, the battle is over. See? Slowly but surely it's sinking in. And they've got a hive mind, you know. The moment one unit realizes that, yikes, this is not looking great, the other units, you know, they come to realize it rather fast as well. And the casualties start racking up and they just become sad and it's it's a pretty sad state of affairs. And as long as I don't lose my generals, I can keep doing this all day, baby. I do need to be careful though, because the goblins, they can quite easily replace their troops. But as I struggle a bit more with that. So I think I might have to start investing in some troops, because money isn't really the problem at the moment. I, I do have a healthy amount of cash. Ah, they got Uruk Overseers, right. They also boost the morale of the men. So if we can get rid of them, then it's night-night forever. If anything, getting the Uruk Overseers to rout should make their morale even worse, because they're the ones that's supposed to keep the morale up for the rest. If even they can't contain themselves, then, you know... What chance do you think you have? The enemy are badly bloody. They have lost half their men. Yep. The heavy goblin crossbows are being a bit annoying. No big surprise there, I suppose. But yeah, I need to be uh, retraining some troops after this. Could also just return home to Austin Ether for retraining, so we don't lose out on the experience we've gained. I'd actually like to retrain a lot of troops during this campaign, just because I, I really want to get full armies with a lot of experience. Not just experience in-game, but also... I want to just be careful with the elves I have, you know. Lore-wise makes sense, and I just want to have these armies that have gone through a lot of crap together. That's one thing I really liked about Rome too, where you could have like experience for troops, but also experience for armies. And you could even upgrade armies with special bonuses based on how experienced that army group is, which is a really nice touch. All right, eighty percent is not enough. That sink in it is not enough. It's better, but. Not quite there. Okay. Eighty-four. We're close. Ah, there's a big chunk of healthy snagger skirmishes over there, ready, ripe for the plucking. Notice. So I think we can round off this first episode with. Somewhat confidence, but also a lot of newfound knowledge. 
We know how to deal with the goblins, we know how to kill them rather effectively, but we also know that if we keep doing this, I don't think we'll win. I think we need to pick our battles a bit smarter. Now, this has been good in pruning their leadership. They've lost two generals already, which is something they will have a much harder time replacing than just their crappy troops. At the same time, I haven't lost any leadership, but I have lost elves. Some troops are going to need retraining, and I am going to need more troops as a whole in total before I start taking settlements. But all in all, quite pleased. Good result. Marco is dead. Another 3,000 orcs. They can't get that many troops in one turn, can they? Alright, um, I guess we could try another ransom. No, oh, okay. I gave you an offer. I just noticed, is that like devastation here? Is that a rebel army in my lads? Yeah. 152 devastation. Hmm. I guess we'll move there. I will pull these troops back for retraining. Um, and I'll also get some Amanyar riders. Just to get a little bit of extra calf. And then I guess in the next episode we'll look towards maybe attacking an Onnarod. Or maybe even going further north towards the Loutwater fields. Um, I do have Palantir. So uh, I guess I'll wait with the Toggle Fog of War for the next one. Uh, okay, Maythor. A warrior who possesses a great skill with weapons. Such skill is generally used to train the Elven Lord's troops in times of peace. However, in times of war, they are the champions of the Elven armies. The martial prowess and the experience of this fighter will be a great source of inspiration for the troops. And they reduce my unit training cost. That's quite nice. Um, but I guess that only applies if he's a governor. Which, uh, yeah, doesn't really apply to me at the moment. Alright, I uh, got a little bit of time left before rounding off this episode. But already I'm quite quite happy with it. I think for the first episode it was quite good. We've established our strengths, we've established our weaknesses. We have gotten quite a bit smarter. But our first goal is definitely to get rid of the goblins. That's going to take away a lot of pressure and also going to rake in a lot of cash. So we'll see. I'd also love to befriend the dwarves. The dwarves of Hazadoom, specifically. Don't ask me why, I just like dwarves. Oh, the Palantir went into effect. Uh, I hate that it happened so fast because I think, yeah, it only lasts a while, then it goes away. But I don't have time because you get all these pop-ups. So whenever that happens, I think I'm allowed to just fully take a look at what's happening. So there are rebel armies here. At least one, Gorlun. So what I'll do is plop my units back in Ostinithil. Get them retrained. Um, so they're ready for the next one, and then move Mirnil and Ecthelion together to get rid of those rebels. That's going to bring in a little bit of cash. Ah, look at it now. The go I I've dealt such a heavy blow to the goblins that Anon and Rod is actually, even Brunost, kind of ripe for the taking, you know? It's actually not that bad. The goblins are going to be a pain in the butt to kill because of the mountain path here, which will allow them to attack from Goblin Town to Zakala, for example. So it's going to be a lot of back and forth. I think we need to be prepared for that. I won't exploit the planter too much. I'm not going to look at everything. Just want to take a look at the goblins. Rioting in Undertowers, that's annoying. Yeah, that's annoying. It's not much I can do about it, unfortunately. Uh, no other buildings finished? No? Austin Ethel's in two more turns on the mines. Yep, oh, okay. Come, my brothers. So I still got these rebels to take care of, which I will do in the next turn. Will I still do it in this episode? No. Your orders, as much as I would want to. Without question. Right, gossip as man. My lord. We've yes. reached Bree. As you Hello, Barleyman. Do you want to trade? This seems quite ah. reasonable. I'm happy he didn't hold any grudges to him losing Farewell. the poll, so that's good. Do I want to talk to the dwarves of Ered Luin? I guess I do. Without oh, that was a mission? Didn't even realize. As what do I get? A free unit? Tomorrow's 900 gold coins. Okay, I'll take it. Even though I need troops more than money at the moment. I could get an extra diplomat, but that's not for now. So next turn I should have already uh, retrained quite a bit of my troops. And once I get rid of the rebel stack, part of me thinks there's more than one rebel stack, but we'll have to just see. Um, then we can maybe try and march on and on and a rod or Brunost. want to avoid Sakala for now. 
But I also need to make sure that I don't leave Austin Ethel completely undefended. So maybe I'll leave my Ernil at home. I'm not 100% certain of that. Uh, yeah, you can marry. Oh, we got another Toggle Fog of War. Now I already regret not getting rid of the population at Under Towers. There's 130 people there. There's more soldiers than people, yet we cannot keep them under control. This rioting might actually turn into a revolt, which is... Yeah, may enter open revolt. There's nothing I can do. Doesn't matter how much my tax rate is, it's stuck at 51%. I think that's a bug, but I might be wrong on that. What I could do... Is bring this guy over for one turn. Just so they don't revolt. Bloop! They're happy now. Austin Nolder is unhappy. But then they'll riot for one turn and then I'll pull back the general and hopefully at that point they'll be pacified. I should have also put down watchtowers along the way. I realize that now. Ah, this rebel scum is just moving around. Alright. So that, my friends, will have to wait for the start of next episode. Hope you guys enjoyed this first episode. As I mentioned in the beginning, if you liked the video, consider leaving a like, consider leaving a comment, consider subscribing if you haven't already. Um, stay tuned for the next episode, which will be here sooner rather than later. Just double checking that I don't need to build anything. Nope. Um, so, yeah, peace be with you. And I hope to see you all very, very soon for episode number two.